Everyone, how are we doing today? Let me just make sure the volume is okay. It is awesome. All right, so it's May 11th. We're doing our daily financial news. Uh, and again, if you are watching this for the first time, thank you very much. We do these daily conversations six days a week, right around 7.30 a.m. Pacific. Uh, and then on Thursdays, we either do them at 6.30 or 8.30, depending on my interview schedule. So thank you very much for tuning in to May 11th couple pages of notes and uh, we'll kind of get into it. First and foremost, uh, looks like oil production is being cut again by Saudi Arabia. Um, awesome, Mike. Let me know what you think and uh, please write a five-star review if you, if you like it. Uh, again, Saudi Arabia is doing an oil production cut of a million barrels. Um, it's pretty pretty significant seeing what's going on. But again, the states are starting to oil or starting to open up gas is going to start to be consumed. Um, you know, we've got the oil market has to be rebalanced. Uh, it is going to be a contributor to short-term deflation. There's no question. Uh, but that is interesting. Uh, in the oil sector, the oil patch, uh, what I think is interesting is we're starting to see the cracks in formations that are going on. Uh, Chesapeake Energy, long, <coughs> long thought to be one of those first companies that would be potentially in trouble, uh, put out a, uh, I think, it was a 10K or 10Q filing uh, with the SEC basically saying, hey, you know, ongoing concern. Not sure if, uh, if we're going to be able to make it through this. So, uh, again, that's kind of one of those first things that come out. But, again, lots of things can happen between now and a bankruptcy filing. Uh, the debt market is clearly opening up and, and lots of things going on. So, um, yep, love me some Sean Pan. He's a, he's a nice guy. Uh, again, so, again, the oil sector we've got to watch. I think it's very clear. Uh, oil is going to be short-term deflation. Uh, consumption will come back. Uh, the world economy will start sputtering along. We, uh, I think we've seen the bottom uh, in, in oil consumption. Uh, so, you know, we're, we're on a slow trajectory up. Uh, interesting, got Paul Tudor Jones, a uh, big hedge fund guy. Uh, he has a, I don't know, I guess I would call it a charity or a foundation called Robin Hood in New York, where he has helped uh, underprivileged uh, folks for, for decades now, most of the time kind of behind the scenes. Uh, but he looks like he made it to uh, the various networks over the weekend. And a couple of things I took from that. Uh, one is his thoughts around Bitcoin. Uh, I get asked about Bitcoin a lot. Uh, so again, when I see something interesting, I make sure it makes it to these daily uh, recordings. Uh, it looks like he has one to almost 2% of his funds in Bitcoin. A um, couple of interesting quotes, one for the positive side, one for the negative side, depending on where you are with Bitcoin. Uh, on one side, he's going, it's the great speculation. All right, speculation, don't really like that, but hey. And the other one is, it is the birthing of a store of value. That's pretty cool, right? So again, he gave the bulls and bears uh, quotes for both articles, and I imagine if you love Bitcoin, you're going to focus on the birthing of store of value. And if you are anti-Bitcoin, you're going to say it's the great speculation. So he helped both sides of the equation. Uh, it looks like Tesla uh, and Elon Musk fight with California is at least temporarily, I, I was going to say over. I don't think he's going to let this go. I think he's, I think he's going to leave California, and he should. Um, you know, he's, uh, he can now resume operations as of yesterday. So I think it starts today. We'll see what resume operations mean. Uh, but boy, whew, that got nasty. Uh, apparently one, I should have wrote down her name, but one legislature in that area basically said F you to Elon Musk uh, for threatening them. Hey, man, it's, this is capitalist. He can, he can move on if he'd like. So um, we, we will see what's going on. Uh, as far as payment systems allowing crypto, uh, I, I, I'm intrigued by blockchain. I like what blockchain ha happens to say. Uh, I think Square would probably be the one for sure that would bring, bring that to bear first. I think it's interesting. I'm not smart enough or deep enough into crypto to pick the winners and losers. Uh, I've long since said that there will be a cryptocurrency. Uh, I just don't know who the winner is going to be. That's my thoughts. Uh, it looks like the malls are really struggling uh, with tenants paying rent. Lots of stuff going on in malls, probably like we would expect. 
Uh, it looks like uh, the owner of Coach and Kate Spade is withholding rent and forcing renegotiations. Um, Simon Properties reports today that is going to be an interesting earnings call. I cannot imagine a worse thing to own than big, big strip malls. And that's what Simon Properties owns. So uh, it is going to be interesting. Uh, I will certainly be reading that this, probably this evening, unless something changes. But I, I will certainly be reading that, if not tomorrow morning for sure. Uh, looks like this working from home thing is, uh, yep, they certainly are. It looked like, um, yeah, <laughs> he could, he could. Good morning. How are you, Nikki? Uh, so again, uh, working from home is taking off. Again, this will, I think, just like malls, will ripple into office space. A lot of the technology companies that live or live, I live near, a couple of them said we're not opening office till January, which I think is excessive. Uh, but others are not even open till the end of the summer. So uh, working from home is going to be interesting, especially if you're in New York and California, which are two real estate markets, I think, in big, big trouble. Uh, because eventually, if you prove work from home works, why would your employees stay in these very high taxed areas? Why wouldn't they go to Nevada or Texas or something of that nature? So uh, I think this work from home thing, if it truly sticks, uh, I think you're going to see a population um, exodus from New York and California, which will hurt those states, but help uh, many others. Uh, looks like Under Armour, uh, again, retailers reporting kind of as we go forward, had a sales plummet of 23%. Um, so it will be interesting to see what happens there. Uh, again, they're kind of hurt because Under Armour is very domestic. It doesn't have a great international presence. And their online present is, presence is weak, weaker than Nike and Adidas. But again, right? You know, we will see what's going forward if this is the low, uh, because, again, with with stores opening up, uh, we will see. But again, I go back to the fact restaurants and stores with six feet distancing, the increased cleaning cost. I don't know. It's going to be interesting. Uh, did you see this today? Carnival Cruise got upgraded. I, I, I love cruises. I've been on 15 or 16 of them the last decade or so. And... Uh, I could not imagine a worse vacation right now going out on a cruise. So um, pr pretty interesting. Uh, but yeah, HSBC upgraded. Uh, it looks like Carnival currently is taking bookings for April. So we will see. Uh, we'll see what happens there. But yeah, there are lots of people gambling. I don't know. I shouldn't say gambling. Speculating on stocks. Uh, and I go back to the fact that both Warren Buffett or Sam Zell are going too soon. Too soon. Yeah, you know, maybe you can say Sam Zell and Warren Buffett are idiots. I think you do that to your detriment. But the fact that those two gentlemen are sitting on billions of dollars and not deploying them yet, that's a sign to me. Uh, anyways, sometimes you see crazy things when you read uh, the news of the morning. But it looks like Amazon is quoted to potentially be interested in AMC Entertainment. AMC Entertainment is essentially movie theaters. Uh I don't get that. Do they want to buy cheap warehouse space maybe? I don't get it. I mean, think about what AMC owns. Why would, why would Amazon want that? And I can't think of an answer. Do they want the parking spaces, right? Because typically speaking, maybe it's a cheap way to buy real estate, maybe. I didn't think of that until right now. Maybe what they're looking for is this a cheaper way to buy acreage. Because again, movie theaters have large parking spaces. So maybe they're going to buy AMC for the real estate at a discount, then knock down the theaters and build warehouses. Maybe. That could be interesting. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I would say investing today is catching a falling knife in real estate, but Amazon's got enough money. They can do what they want. Uh, I did think it was odd that I read that, I think his name's Eric Schmidt, uh, former uh, Google CEO, has been tasked uh, by Cuomo to reimagine New York. What little I know of Eric is, I thought he was a Californian. Why would you tap a Californian to reimagine New York? That's, that's damn near insulting. I wouldn't want a New Yorker to come in and reimagine California. I don't know. That just doesn't make sense to me. But whatever. Uh, looks like we have um, the S&P 500 
40% of the companies, which quick math says 200 of them, have um, no guidance given for future quarters. Wow, nice work. Wow, you're busy. Um, so again, 40% uh, of the S&P 500 is uh, withheld guidance, which again, I think is so scary as an investor. Because again, I think what's going to happen is they're going to just come in and do that kitchen sink quarter I talked about in a video last week. Man, they're going to throw all kinds of junk at that income statement and make those earnings per share look terrible. But we shall see. Uh, I believe United Airlines was trying to do a $2.5 billion bond offering, uh, but actually had to pull it because the interest uh, in the security, which would be their planes, wasn't there, right? Uh, which is I think I see as a good sign. It means that we're not just taking anybody's junk. Uh, but basically the collateral wasn't good enough to warrant uh, securing that bond. So I thought it was good. Uh, WeWork is, uh, I can't believe that, that business has to go bankrupt. They've signed <coughs> what now is ridiculous leases with trophy properties. They're withholding rent. Then people that rent from them are withholding rent. Man, can you imagine WeWork was days away from going public? That would have been a spectacular crash, wouldn't it? Um, just as an example of how much pain they're in, they have a $240 million loan secured against their San Francisco office building. It is now trading at $0.73 cents on the dollar. So doing the math on that takes a $240 million face value loan down to $175 million. That's... That's crazy. So again, we, we've interviewed some asset managers on this channel and a lot of folks are looking to buy paper, which is buy the note. That's an example of a note being traded at a discount. The face value is 240. Uh, the current value is 73 cents on the dollar and probably falling. Uh, but that's what's going on in the market. Uh, and then Redfin CEO, kind of the final one I wanted to talk about today is out. First, Redfin is joining Opendoor and be reigniting their iBuyer program. And then second, uh, the CEO came out and said uh, Airbnb housing in beach communities is toast. Ouch. And I think he's right. We've I've actually talked about on the channel for three or four weeks now that that's a particular part of the real estate investing landscape that is in trouble. Lots of people reached uh, when buying... Um, Airbnbs, they like they got attracted to the daily rates. They did this math of 20 days of occupancy and blah, blah, blah. So they overpaid, they overimproved, they stocked it full of stuff, and now they're left holding the bag and they're, they're probably already in loan forbearance and they're just going to start listing. Uh, so again, lots of stuff going on in the world. Again, if you're following me because you're interested in real estate investing, now is the time to learn your market. I think the market is going to get very noisy and choppy uh, at this point. Um, when will they hit the properties? They got to get through forbearance. Right now, Josh, uh, you're not really going to list because you're in forbearance. There's no pressure to pay because your mortgage is, you don't have to pay your mortgage. Whenever these forbearances get out, so it's going to be months away. Um, what would I invest today? I would invest in knowledge. You, you, the market is going to get choppy. And again, look at the interview I did with Michael Hernandez yesterday, just talking about what's going on in one local multiple listing service. Listings are way down. Listings is from owner, occupant, sellers way down and demand is still there. So prices aren't adjusting down yet. In fact, they're actually, you could argue going up. Uh, so again, this is not the time. Uh, this is not the time to go, oh, I have 100K saved or 20K saved or whatever it is and go buy something. I'm not that person. Um, we've got to see. This is like be Sam Zell, be uh, Warren Buffett. Learn, learn, learn your market. Understand, understand what a good or great deal is. That's all I ever did in one rental at a time. Is ninety nine percent of the stuff listed is an average deal or worse. I just got good at trying to create or find good or great deals because you don't have to say yes to everything. Um, that's something very important to me. So just just learn your market. There's nothing wrong with learning your market for the next two months. That's what I teach. That's what I talk about. That's what my students really like. We talk about it every Saturday on our live stream. So that's what I would tell you. Don't be in a rush. Not the time. 
All right, everybody, that's the daily news. And of course, it's Monday. That means I have an 8 a.m. interview with Greg Dickerson. So I am going to get ready for that. I wish you all the best. Take care. Bye.